Greetings and salutations, fellow soldiers on the digital battlefront. Welcome to another episode of the Digital Commanders. As always, we shall week, we shall be and we out. Uh, we have another episode of Digital Commanders. Today I'm going to be playing the Stanley Parable for you all. This has been on my radar for a little bit. Definitely the humor is right up my alley with the sort of dry British humor um, and witty delivery. So I thought it'd be best if this time around I actually do a face cam video along with the game to see if there's any reaction to be had from me from whatever might be said based on the choices that I make. I've seen some game videos of this already and it seemed different in a good way and exciting and funny. So we'll see what happens. I haven't played this game yet. This is the first time I'm doing this along with you all. We're sharing a Kodak moment. Wait it, take it all in, take it all in. Okay, let's get started. And we're beginning. The end is never the end, is never the end, is never this the end. This is the story okay, of a man named Wonderland. Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job this, was simple. He sat at his this desk is totally in room space 427 and he pushed buttons on the keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day, every month, of every year. And although others might have considered it soul winding, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley, was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar Okay, happened. nothing against anyone who something may actually appreciate doing work like that. Something he would that never would drive me up forget. the wall. I couldn't, He had no. been at his desk for nearly an hour bonkers. when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say, hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened, this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and I stepped think out of his office. Issues. Okay. I'm walking out of my office. Can I touch stuff? What is it? What am I type? How am I typing? What am I typing? There's no keyboard in front of me. I'm clicking the left mouse button right now and it makes a typing. But Stanley sound. simply oh. couldn't handle the pressure. What if he had to make a decision? What if a crucial outcome fell under his responsibility? He had never been trained for that. No. This couldn't go any way except badly. The thing to do now, Stanley thought to himself, is to wait. Nothing will hurt me. Nothing will break me. In here I can be happy forever. I will be happy. Stanley waited. Hours passed. Oh God. Then days. Here had years gone by? He no longer had the ability to tell. But the one thing he knew for sure beyond any years was that if he waited long enough, the answers would come. Eventually, someday, they would arrive. Soon, very soon now, this will end. He will do I want the answers to arrive right now? He told what to do. Now it's just a little bit closer. Now it's even closer. Here it comes. Just, uh... <laughs> so I'm like forced to leave anyway. <laughs> okay. We're exiting out of the office race right now. Hello? Somehow I'm still typing. No keyboard. Still typing. Nope. Nope. Oh. All of his co-workers were gone. Okay. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. 
What does that say on that computer screen? I can't see it. Um. What a lovely picture. Uh, that door is open. Wait, does that mean there's somebody else in here with me? The when I watched videos on this, they were, they were quite. I mean, they they weren't vague, but then they were. It was a pretty good trailer actually when they were doing it. So I don't. I mean, I know what to expect. At least I know how the game is kind of supposed to go, but then I don't know what to expect. When Stanley came and maybe that's to the point of the game, doors, is that... He entered the door on his left. Is that you... I'm never quite sure what's going to happen. Do I go left? <laughs> the ultimate question. Which path do you choose? Do I go left? Or do I go right? Which way am I going to go, booze and goose? Left or right? Take your bets. Take your bets. This was not righty tidy. I'm going right. And standing you, whoever said right, well. perhaps he would have stopped by the employee lounge first just to admire it. The hell is the employee lounge? Why do I want to go there? Seems like nobody here. Ah, yes, truly a room worth admiring. It had really been worth the detour after all, just to spend a few moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. Stanley simply stood here, Immaculate drinking it all in. Immaculate Mike us. But Stanley eager to get back to business, boring. Stanley took the first open door on his left. Yep. That was my left. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't five years ago. Uh. <laughs> Screw you, voice, voice of whatever the hell you are. <laughs> Snarky ass. <laughs> okay, what is this? I don't want to fall down. Okay, what do we got here? Uh, warning, do not jump from the cargo lift while it is in motion will cause death. Noted. Penalty for misuse of cargo lift, $1,000. Penalty for jumping off of the cargo lift, five thousand dollars well i'm gonna think the penalty for jumping off the cargo lift is a little more than five thousand dollars it's probably your life as well <laughs> okay what to do i'm gonna guess i can't go through this door all right so obviously the lift look stanley i think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here i'm not your enemy really i'm not I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. Please, stop trying to make every decision by yourself. Now, I'm not asking for me, I'm asking for her. This is it, Stanley. Your chance to redeem yourself. Her. Put your work aside. How did he know? <laughs> She's been waiting. And the her is the stapler. This is going to be now the universal hand gesture for staplers. All right, let's see here. Up. Uh. uh Oh, this is probably you know, isn't it? That's her, Stanley. You need to be the one to do this. To reach out to her. If you can truly place your faith in another, then pick up the phone. Has anyone seen Blair Witch? Being in a dark room, does this ever go well? Let's just answer the phone. Sweetie, sorry to keep you waiting. I'm just pulling the bread out of the oven. All right. Okay, there we go. All right, now, I want you to come in and tell me all about... Your damn <laughs> 
<laughs> gotcha. Oh, come on. Did you actually think you had a loving wife? Who'd want to commit their life to you? I'm trying to make a point here, Stanley. I'm trying to get you to see something. What a Come inside. Dick. Let me show you what's really going on here. <laughs> He's kind of an a-hole, isn't he? I like him. <laughs> you know what this the is a very first thing I think of is the mannequin of people from Stanley. Doctor Who when that thing appeared, and I'm like, whoa, this game's taking on a whole other thing. Good morning, employee 427. Press 3 on your keyboard. Let's see how Stanley far this rabbit hole goes. Fellow. He has a job that demands nothing of him, and every button that he pushes is a reminder of the inconsequential nature of his existence. Look at him there, pushing buttons, doing exactly what he's told to do. Now he's pushing a button. Now he's eating lunch. Now he's going home. Now, he's coming back to work. One might even feel sorry for him, except that he's chosen this life. Uh, I don't want to press it. I don't want to press it. I'm not going to press it. I'm not going to press it. See what happens. So how are you all doing today? Did you all just, just stop by the channel, did you? Take a little, little gander at the video. And, and, and me, of course. Unless you weren't looking for me, then I apologize that you found me and not, you know, someone else. Wow, this is boring. But All right, mind, fine, we're I, pressing it. In his mind, he can go on fantastic adventures. From behind his desk, Stanley dreamed of wild expeditions into the unknown. Fantastic discoveries of new lands. It was wonderful. And each day that he returned to work was a reminder that none of it would ever happen to him. Please press H to And so he began to fantasize about his own job. First, he imagined that one day while at work, he stepped up from his desk to realize that all of his co-workers, his boss, everyone in the building had suddenly vanished off the face of the earth. The thought excited him terribly. Please press eight to spend time with the boys. So he but, went further. What boys? He imagined that Twilight he came zone? to two open doors and that he could go through either. At last, choice. It barely even mattered what lay behind each door. The mere thought that his decisions would mean something was almost too wonderful to behold. As he wandered through this fantasy dead. world, he began to fill it with many possible paths and destinations. Down one path lay an enormous Whoa. round room what the with heck? monitors Wasn't this and a... mind controls. And down another was a yellow line that weaved in many directions. And down another was a game with a baby. Wasn't that a kitchen and just a moment ago? The Stanley Parable. It was such a wonderful so... fantasy. And so in his head, he relived it again. And then again, and again, over and over, wishing beyond hope that it would never end, that he might always feel this free. Surely there's an answer down some new path, mustn't there be? Perhaps if he played just one more time. But there is no answer. How could there possibly be? In reality, all he's doing is pushing the same buttons he always has. Nothing has changed. The longer he spends here, the more invested he gets, the more he forgets which life is the real one. And I'm trying to tell him this, that in this world he can never be anything but an observer, that as long as he remains here, he's slowly killing himself. But he won't listen to me. He won't stop. Here, watch this. Stanley, the next time he asks you to push a button, do not do it. And here's the, here's, he's telling me to not push a button, and if I don't push it, then I'm still doing exactly what I'm told. If I push the button, then it's the same thing I've been doing all this time. So it's, it's like, there's no, there's no getting around it. <laughs> well played, game developers. Well played. 
There's there's no way around this. I can't get out of here unless I push the button. You see? Ah! Uh, he does not hear me. How can I tell him in a way that he'll understand that every second he remains here, he's electing to kill himself? How can I get him to see what I see? How can I make him look at himself? Press <laughs> to question nothing. I suppose I can't. Not in the way I want him to. But I don't make the rules. I simply play to my intended purpose, the same as Stanley. We're not so different, I suppose. I'll try once more to convey all this to him. I'm compelled to. I must. Perhaps, well, maybe this time you'll see. Maybe this time. And I tried again. And Stanley pushed a button. Uh, and I tried again. And Stanley pushed a button. And I tried... <laughs> How dark. <laughs> it just reloads. Uh... All of his co-workers were gone. Okay. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Go to the meeting room. When Stanley came to a set so of I two just... open doors, he entered the door on his left. Okay. Just to recap exactly what happened, in case you guys' minds are blown as mine is a little bit right now. There's two things going on here, maybe even more. Stanley, the character, is also us because, one, we are actually controlling it, and two, it's it's meant to be an example that, that the more you stay in front of your computer and, and do something, you're pretty much doing exactly what Stanley is doing. You're making Stanley move. Stanley is a reflection of the person who's playing the game, who's moving around and doing so on a computer. So, this is pretty funny. I went down the right door. I'll go down this path before I end this video. This is a little bit of a mind trip. Yet, there was not a single person here there. either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Let it ball up inside of you. Take it out passive aggressively on other coworkers. Resent coworkers for not supporting you more. It's okay. Make sure your slide has a slick blue graphic in the header and throw some bevel on all the text. This will ensure a calm and productive work environment. Everyone is unique. You most of all. But if everyone is unique then are they really unique if everyone is unique and nobody is normal? Stanley just stood there doing Could nothing at all. He seems to think I have nothing better to do with my time than to sit around and describe every fascinating little detail of his inability to do anything. This is why Stanley and I are on such good terms. <gasps> I'm tempted to just sit here now. On your boss appreciation minute worksheet, circle the top two things you love most about your jobs. If you ever find yourself in a conflict with another diligent employee like yourself, but more inclined toward conflict, unless you're the kind of person who in initiates conflict, why did we hire you? Oh, I don't... What are your dreams for the future? Success, transcendence, Okay, what is on this board here? To do. Synergize. Core value. Expenditures. Shift goal. Don't worry. Don't test. Talk less. Do unbelievably amazing work all the time every day with no expectation of promotion or recognition. Don't get fired. Okay. Okay. Room closet. Coming to a staircase, Stanley oh, yes, walked upstairs yeah. to his boss's office. Oh no. I went downstairs. But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? What All the heck? because he believed everyone had vanished. His boss would think he was crazy. 
And then something occurred to Stanley. What the heck? Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously <laughs> out of existence in a single moment for no <laughs> reason at all. None of it made any logical sense. Or am I? And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? Why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, these <laughs> rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they simply repeating? No, Stanley <laughs> said to himself, this is all too strange. This can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming, he yelled. This is all a dream. <laughs> oh, what a relief Stanley felt to have finally found an answer, an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real-life job pushing buttons. This is seriously just well going on. This while I'm still lucid. So, he imagined himself flying and began to gently float above the ground. Then he imagined what himself the? soaring through space on a magical star field, and it too appeared. It was so much fun. And Stanley Martin, <laughs> this is such a mind trip. How was it <laughs> made so I lucid? love this game. Then perhaps the strangest oh, question of them all. David and Ted, said. you Why have to amazed, play he this. Asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head <laughs> dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. And while he thought it all very odd, and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their oh. dreams, the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself, believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for Can himself? No. Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. After all, he knew for certain, <laughs> beyond a doubt, that this was in fact a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself too, surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control. The developer that this was a dream. Had, whoever wrote this so he script closed his eyes gently, is genius. And he invited himself <laughs> to wake up. Oh. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin, the press of the mattress on his back, the fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up. I have no idea what's going to happen to himself. Next. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons, please. It's all I want. I want my apartment and my wife and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. I thought I didn't have a wife. Or that Everything was the last will be fine. I am okay. I'm not okay. I don't know what that. Stanley began screaming. Please, someone wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, just someone tell me I'm real. <laughs> I must be real. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? And it... What the hell is going on? This is the story of a woman named Mariella. Mariella woke up on a day like any other. What the she arose, heck? got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy, this much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control <laughs> of my mind. Heck. 
I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this, and in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day, the very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career, and by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this, so it was only a moment that she stood the there, heck? staring down at the body. And then she turned and ran. What the heck? <laughs> this game is such a mind trip. This has got to be one of the more enjoyable games I've played in a while. I have no idea what the hell just happened. I don't know what's going to happen next. This was so bizarre, but I absolutely loved it. And you all watched it with me. This... <laughs> so ridiculous other digital commanders y'all need to try this game out stanley parable that does it for me um maybe i can get ted and david to do this also for you guys but i'll see you all next time or will i i don't know i don't know if i'm stanley or not now i don't know what's real i'll see y'all goodbye goodbye